Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. Where'd you guys go? Hello. Hello. <clears throat> Is anyone out there? I'm here. Jerry's here. And I love it when that drummer nails that final drum before he says, and now here is John DePietro and Bob Zagami. Well, I hope I don't look exactly like Bob Zagami. I'm kind of, I heard I was filling in, so I decided to show up. And thanks for having me on the show tonight, John. Well, Bernie, we're looking forward to your contributions to the show. You always do a great job. And oh, thank you. We want to let everyone know that this is RVing New England, and it's brought to us every week at this time by... Good afternoon, all the New England RV dealers in Nervda. Welcome to Lee's Auto and RV. We want to welcome everybody down for our Harvest Jubilee sale. Yeehaw! Come on down. We want to thank Bob Zagami once again for inviting us into the Nervda show on Wednesday night. And there's a partner he's yeah, got. Who partner. is it? Yeah. Oh, that's right. John DePietro. Oh, John DePietro. Wow. That's hilarious. Wow, they didn't forget you. They didn't forget me this time. I'll tell you one thing. But I know our engineer, Bill Sell. Bill, if you have that other one and want to uh, put that up now, we can do that as well, that new commercial. Good afternoon, Nervda. Hey, we want to welcome Gracie back from her 14,000-mile trip. Gracie. Hey, everyone. How's it going? It's good. Yeah, you had a good time on your van life trip of North America? It was awesome. All right. What do you got here? A little, little teardrop, Grace? A little mini max. Nice, nice. Decals. Beautiful. That's the wilderness package I just came out with. So maybe next week we'll get a little bit of more information on Grace's 14,000-mile tour of North America. But in the meantime, Grace, we want to invite everybody down? Yeah, come. we want to welcome everyone to come down, check out our facility, our family-owned dealership. We have a great selection of units in stock now, and we have the Harvest Jubilee sale going on now until Thanksgiving. So All right. Have, yeah, have everyone come on down to see us. Great. Looking forward to seeing everybody. Welcome everybody from the Nervda Group and the Nervda Association and Bob Zagami and John DePietro. Talk to you next week. Wow. So we want to thank uh, our friends at Lee's. And Bernie, we've got a special guest tonight. Uh, we're not going to bring him on yet because we've got a couple things to talk about. Why don't you tell our audience who they can look forward to meeting? So tonight just... we have an extraordinary entrepreneur who lives his life's passion through operating nationalparkstraveler.org uh, website. Yep. So National Parks Traveler is the number one editorial independent website dedicated to coverage of national parks with over 3 million annual readers and listeners. The Traveler has been featured in USA Today, Peter Greenberg Worldwide Radio, Los Angeles Times, Pauline Frommer's podcast, San Jose Mercury News, The Charlotte Observer, AOL.travel, and tonight on RV in New England, where you're going to get a chance to meet up with Kurt Repencheck. And he's just a fantastic, prolific gentleman. We're going to have a fantastic time. Now, you listed off some pretty prestigious um, publications that he's already spoken to. But right. we are going to um, make it so that this show that he's on tonight, right. RV in New England, is going to be the um, best media appearance that he's ever met absolutely i i can't see that we won't can't say that it won't happen because tonight is going to be an exciting night not only for our being in new england but it's going to be an exciting night for nationalparkstraveler.org i think right. it's going to be a great for all in all of our listeners of course and and folks you have to realize this is a non-profit organization that provides bundles and oodles and oodles of information for all of you who like to go RVing, love the national parks, love history. It's amazing. Oodles and oodles. Oodles and Not oodles. Not just lots of, but oodles and oodles of information. Now, we're going to ask our uh, engineer extraordinaire, Bill Sell, 
um, if he can just type in National Parks Traveler. So we can give our audience an opportunity to, um, there we go, nationalparkstraveler.org. That's their website. Um, take a look there uh, if you want, if you can, uh, what do you call it, multitask. We yeah, should you also you mention- screen around, right? Look right. at it all. Yeah, exactly. We should also mention that uh, Mr. Mizugami, um is not with us tonight because he is on a cruise. And right about now, seven o'clock he's either at dinner or he's losing money on the slot machines so they're on what the liberty of the seas and they went to coco k one of those fake islands that's put together um by the cruise line just outside of nassau and he's out there for a couple of days with his lovely wife and um it well, was just hope he enjoys himself. I mean, you know, you know what? I, I can feel his presence. He's actually probably on his cell phone watching <laughs> us right now, and he just won't let it go. <laughs> I just hope he's not taking time watching. I it. hope he's not, but I guarantee you tomorrow he'll be like, Yeah, you guys had a pretty good show. You know? Yeah, yeah. Or losing dinner at the slot machine. So let's <laughs> uh, uh Barney, right, let's Jerry, do a little rundown here. Who we got uh, starting up there with Jerry? Jerry Plant, and Walt is back from all his 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 tough times down in Flow Rider. That was a that was a tough time for you there, man. And I hope you're doing okay. Yeah. Then we got Dante. Dante. Yeah, Dante. Excellent friends. Yeah. He showed up on time tonight. Absolutely. He showed up on time tonight, and Estelle is with us. And Ryan. Speaking of Ryan Hadley. Speaking of Ryan Hadley, I was just going through the archives. And, you know, look, at folks, this is November 2nd that we're uh, doing this show live. Uh, and it was 71 degrees today. But when I talked to Ryan Hadley last week, the temperature was dipping into the 30s. And Ryan and I had the opportunity to talk about winterizing your RV. Mm, that's and fantastic. We put this special presentation together that bill is going to show us and it seems kind of crazy talking about winterizing when it was 71 degrees but bill if you can uh, hit the button for that okay everybody it's a time of year where you winterize your rv and we're our, we're with um, ryan and scott uh from trick mobile rv repairs and ryan there's plenty of people that want to do it on their own and that's fine but there's always one thing that they forget. Can you point out that one thing? To drain the water heater. Drain the water drain heater. Drain the Put water it. heater and bypass it so you don't have to fill it up with antifreeze. Scott, show me that. Uh, that Right here. It's either a 15 sixteenths if it's a nylon plug or it's an inch and a sixteenth if it has a metal plug with an anode rod in it. Okay. Now, Ryan, what if you don't do that? You want to save money. You don't want to pay yep. a uh, dealership or repair service. Um, how much can that mistake cost you? Uh, right now it can cost you about a little over a thousand dollars, depending on what kind of water heater you have to put a new one. Some in. of these water heaters like this one, they don't even make them anymore. So you have to get a different brand, different version uh, of it. So it gets a little and change some of the plumbing. So it, it gets a little tricky sometimes. So, okay. So the key thing, Scott is, uh, do it all right. Do everything. And don't forget that. Okay. Absolutely. Hey, a 60 second, actually a 70 second. Save your RV tip. Make sure when you're doing your own winterizing that what? Or Ryan, if you don't want to do your own winterizing, yeah, right. give us a call. Call you, that's right. <laughs> okay, there we go, everybody. Well, nice job there, Ryan. You know, that's one of those tips that not you do everything else and you forget to do that. And what happens to your hot water tank? Kaplooey. The thing will expand and crack and uh, big big dough replacing that especially on a, a fully uh, body paint uh, vehicle like that one that they were at so that would cause some serious uh, headaches and costs associated with that exactly and you know what jerry and i jerry plant and i joke a lot about people that um you know do their own thing or don't want to spend the money at a dealership but we're really we're really talking expensive um consequences if you forget to do that. So there's always majors you can go to. There's always campers in where Bernie is. There's always Lee's that does that stuff. And any of the member dealers of the New England RV Dealers Association, I'm sure, provide that service. And um, 
it's only what a 10 minute job. So it's not like you've got to bring it there the whole day. Hey, so, do you mind if I go over some of the other things that people should look at when they're winterizing their camper? Because it's look, not just about the water systems, right? Of course, you're going to make sure that you're going to drain all your water systems. And if you really do it right, you're going to be using the potable antifreeze to siphon in the system and bypassing the hot water heater. Now, some of the new hot water heaters, the on-demand ones, you don't necessarily bypass it. Uh, you can actually let it take in the antifreeze as long as you don't turn it on when it has the antifreeze in it. That would be a bad, bad thing. But there are other things involved. Cleaning your camper inside and out, top and bottom, are essential. The oils, the dirt, the grime, they eat away at the surfaces, whether it be flooring, counters, roof material, the, the, uh, the fiberglass or the aluminum on the side, Dirt and grime and mold and mildew eat away at these surfaces and they never clean right if you don't keep them clean on a regular basis. The other thing is, is to clean the roof material properly. If it's a rubber roof, you're going to want to reseal the whole roof and, and you always want to inspect the caulking on any roof. I don't care if you spent $20,000 on an RV or $250,000 or $500,000. You always have to inspect the roof seals around mm. all the vents. Now, Bernie, you bring that up, and let's look at a very important point. There are people that think that um, the winter causes damage, and there are people that think that the sun causes damage. The reality is, is that with a roof, you're subject to, to temperature changes. You're subject to um, things falling on it that you don't know fell on it. You know, if you park it under a tree and uh, a branch falls, it can make a puncture mark that's so small that even if you go up on it and brush it off, you don't know if the damage is done. So I don't see Jim Conboy here today, but, you know, Jim, has got, <laughs> he's lined up. He's got units lined up. And, um, you know, Jerry brings up a very interesting point. They sell at, at majors. They sell 50 toilet water valves every spring because people forget to flush the toilet. With the pink stuff. Absolutely. And um, crazy, crazy. You know, stuff. that's one thing, too, is right. You you, you actually put a, should put a little of that glycol antifreeze on top of the seal for the toilet. And you should put yep. some in your trap as well because yep. it keeps that, that gasket, that rubber gasket, nice and moist. So then you don't get vapors, the, the, the nasty vapors that you're saying, I, honey, I need a new toilet because you didn't put that little couple of drops of pink stuff or maybe like three or four ounces on top of that uh, gasket yeah and you know what you can go to your local uh, rv store and pick that up for what five six dollars a gallon I right know the price has gone up considerably but walter uh, and i think walter walter brings up new england rv roof and i think walter was a customer on one of his units down there and i know he um speaks very highly of it and um speaking of speaking very highly of a great product Mm -hmm. Why don't we ask Bill to press a button and take us direct to Park City, Utah? We'll go out a little two minutes early. And there is our special guest for the evening. Bernie, you've hey. got his name all figured out. So why don't you uh, tell our audience who it is? Well, I had a, a nice speech earlier where I talked about who you were. I actually kind of plagiarized uh, one of Kurt's emails and took that information off there. But Kurt, thank you so much for joining us this evening. His name is Kurt Rapanchek. Rapanchek. Rumpelstiltskin. 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 Yeah. Bernie, uh, Bernie, Bernie, you had a I, half hour to prepare. We asked you to do I one it. thing and you mess it up. I said it right earlier and then it just kind of got stuck in my tongue there. No worries. I think in the time that we've had to uh, do this first few minutes of the show that Kurt has gotten out and got more lighting on his face. So before oh, he was kind of a beautiful. silhouette <laughs> and um, he's there, but Kurt, welcome to RVing in New England. And um, Bernie told us a little bit about your publication, but in, in the editor's own words of what national park traveler is, um, tell us what it is. You know, John, um, national park traveler is, is basically, it's a hybrid between a daily newspaper and a, a monthly magazine or a weekly ma magazine in that we do 
daily news coverage, um, depending on what's going on. It could be a search and rescue story. It could be wildfires, could be hurricanes, could be a congressional hearing involving financing for the National Park Service. It really depends what's going on on any given day. And then we also do feature coverage that um, ranges from travelogue pieces, how to enjoy uh, Great Smoky Mountains National Park or Acadia National Park to uh, issue oriented features, looking at um, issues across the national park system. We've written about invasive species and the, the threats that they pose to the national park system and how the National Park Service is battling them. Um, we've written about the the lack of housing for Park Service employees and the problem that that's creating for the National Park mm -hmm. Service around the national park system. So it's really a, a, a robust media outlet. And then we also do weekly podcasts. You know, if you don't like to read um, content online, you can listen to um, our, our, our guests that we hold every, every Sunday. We have a fresh podcast that comes out. Right. But it should be pointed out that you are not the PR flack arm of the National Park Service. You are no, a totally independent organization. That, that's absolutely true. And, and sometimes we really irritate the National Park Service. And um, I'm not sure if I'm going through one of those times right now or not. But um, <laughs> um, most of the parks are, are great. There's great staff out there. And um, as you can tell, reading through the Traveler, um, we have a great relationship with the Park Service. And they do an incredible job um, across the country and as far west as the Western Pacific with American National Park of uh, um, American Samoa to the Virgin Islands and Virgin Island National Park. Hmm. Hey, no. Kurt, you know, with, with all these resources that have been developed, and a lot of it's been done by you and the board of directors, and it, it looks like you have a working board, everyone's participating. Where did the passion come from for you to want to produce this website and create all these resources and information and history for all, all the folks that were listening tonight and around the world and around the country, for sure. You know, the, the passion goes back to when I was a young boy growing up in New Jersey. Um, every month we would get this yellow covered magazine in the mail called National Geographic. And that really let me travel all over the world and, and explore all these different faraway places. And this one story I read about was this place where this guy in the wintertime, he had to go up on top of the roofs of these cabins to shovel them off so the snow load wouldn't collapse the cabins. And uh, lo and behold, that was Yellowstone National Park. And uh, my, my parents, God bless them, they, they would take us on these fun vacations every summer. And uh, the very first national park I went to was in your backyard, Acadia National Park. Um, so I, I've always had a passion for national parks and uh, I came out of college with a, a journalism degree, and it just seemed to make great sense to, to blend those two passions. Wow. Now, one of our uh, viewers, Jerry, here says, Acadia is my favorite. Do you have a favorite park, Kurt? Um, the one I'm in. <laughs> it, it really varies. I mean, I, I always say that Yellowstone is my favorite because it's such an incredible park with the wildlife and the geothermal activity there and the lakes and the forests. But really... Any national park I find myself in is just fantastic. Just mm -hmm. last week, I was in northern New Mexico with uh, Patrick Cohn, our special projects editor, and we were visiting a number of parks. And, and one, of them, one of them we went to was Bandelier National Monument, which is a fabulous place, which you know, preserves and interprets the, the history of ancestral Puebloans you know, going back a thousand years and the, the structures they lived in there. It's just a fascinating park and the, the culture and the history you know, anywhere you go in the national park system, there's something to really embrace and, and fall in love with, I think. You know, ladies and gentlemen, if you just joined us, this is RV in New England. Uh, Bernie Collison is sitting in for Bob Zagami. I'm John DePietro. Our special guest is Kurt Repencheck, and he is the editor, founder, chief cook and bottle washer for nationalparkstraveler.org. Now, I want to tell you this. Um, there are so many media outlets about RVing and camping and that type of thing, but yours really stands above so many. And I'm going to tell people right now, uh, and we're going to talk about the um, RVing guide to the national parks in just a minute, um, but give people the opportunity. Actually, I'll tell them right now, if they've got a favorite national park, just type it in. 
and let us know. We can talk about that and special hello to Mark Labreck. Um, but at the same time, it, it appears that you have a staff of 40 or 50 full-time people in order to provide the content that you provide on a daily, weekly, monthly, and annual basis. But it's really you and a few other people. And if people look at your website, there are not sponsors from giant companies. So most of your funding comes from readers like us. It's kind of like, like uh, public, t public TV. And we're going to ask Bill if he has the, um, the URL to put up there. Folks, if you want to donate um, anything, okay, to um, National Parks Traveler, um, I don't know how you'll be able to do it by looking at, oh, there you go. <laughs> you go look at that, copy and paste, whatever. And um, you will find that the content that you get is absolutely amazing. And it's really national parks journalism. And, you know, there's so many more new campers out here since COVID that um, a lot of people are saying, oh, national parks are, are stressed beyond belief. But um, this is the go-to place for information about national parks. But hey, not you mind if I chime in there for a second? Yeah, Go right John. ahead. Yeah, so how would a typical... RVing family benefit from the resources that you could find on the National Park Traveler website? You know, one of the things we, we launched this year uh, was an effort to really publicize the parks that you don't hear about. I mean, everybody knows about Yellowstone and Acadia and Great Smoky Mountains and Shenandoah, and that's why you've got these incredible crowds there. But I took a, a road trip this summer through Nebraska and Kansas for two weeks and I went to Scott's Bluff National Monument and uh, Homestead National Historical Park of America, um, Tallgrass Prairie National Preserve, Fort Larned National Historic Sites. And these are all incredible places, you know, depending on, you know, your interest in history or your history in homesteading of, of America, how that all came together. Tallgrass Prairie, they preserve a, a slice of the Tallgrass Prairie that once covered, a, I think, 170 million acres of North oh. America, and now there might be 4% left. Um, as I said uh, earlier, I was just down in New Mexico, and I hit uh, Viaz Caldera National Preserve, um, Bandelier National Monument, Pecos National Historic Site, and on the way home, I hit uh, Hovenweep National Monument. And so, yes, you've got your big destination parks, quote unquote, and you've got a lot of these other places that may not be a final destination, but can be a destination along the way where you can really sure. in, enjoy a, a yep. smaller unit without the yep. crowds. Um, we've got on the Traveler, if you dive into it deep enough, suggested road trips where you can spend a week in, say, Arizona or a week in northern New Mexico visiting a handful of units without the crowds that you run into in the Yellowstones and the Great Smoky Mountains, without the higher costs. We were in um, the campground at Bandelier, and this was last week. I realize it's uh, um, mid-fall, late fall, depending on where you live. If you're bound by the school calendar, you probably can't do that, but only half the campground was full. It was wonderful. Wow. Hmm. You know, that, that's just a, an amazing fact, though. There's so many places that we don't even know about. Like most of the places you just mentioned, I might have heard one, once or twice in my life, you know, and but they're all out there and they're all available. And what's amazing, folks, is that if you get onto this website, you're going to see uh, not only does he have 194 podcasts <laughs> of how long since 2019, nonstop, once a week. Right, yeah. February. Yeah. So, and then he has like video blogs where he's doing basically news events and where there's writing going on, videos interjected. So it, it, there's just so much content and it's all categorized and broken down. And if uh, Bill could open that site up again and get back onto um, a part of that, and you can take a look at some of the menus that there are. And in each menu, you can find several hundred yeah, so if you go into the topics and then you get into the you know the one about RVers, and then um, there was another section in there where I found um, 
And uh, what was that? Yeah, at, at any rate, just tons and tons of resources. And um, yeah, some like special, special events. So yeah, it's just incredible what's going on. Now, I was reading this one ar article about Cumberland Island, Island National Seashore in Georgia. And it's a good way to write about a tremendous recent uptick in popularity for families to visit national parks and how the National Park Service was responding to the increase in the need and more visitation to the parks. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, that's just a, an evolving story in that, you know, they, they've put out this proposal to um, produce a visitor use management plan. And part of the controversy that is just coming out of it right now, it's going through a 30-day public comment period. But there are some concerns out there about that increased visitation. Um, mm -hmm. Back in 1984, the, the park produced its general management plan, which is kind of its roadmap to how we're going to manage Cumberland Island. And uh, they said they wanted to manage towards a, a daily average um, of 300 visitors a day. And in this new proposal, they would boost that up to, to 700 roughly a day, which is, you know, more than doubling the visitation um, on paper. And there's some concerns about, you know, have they properly addressed the wilderness, the official wilderness in the National Seashore right. and some other things. And so, you know, sanitation and, you know, trash pickup and just maintaining, you're right, you know, make sure the, the landscape doesn't change so dramatically because of it, right? Exactly. And what we try and do at National Parks Traveler is, I mean, we all love the national parks. We love to visit them and enjoy them and whatnot. But there are all these back issues that you don't hear about in the daily newspapers or television stations. And we try and bring those to the forefront. You know, so if you find yourself on a National Parks Traveler reading a story about, you know, visiting Acadia or Cape Cod and stick around and start poking around our news section, you might learn about some of these management plans and you might say that's a great idea or you might say that's a horrible idea, but at least you know about it and you can add your comments to the National Park Service to let the agency know what you think about their proposals. That's a very good point. Amazing. And let's ask you again, folks. And Jerry says we were, we were headed for Glacier a few years ago and had to detour due to fires. We took a left and this, there you go. Discovered Teddy Roosevelt National Park. It was amazing. Are you familiar with that place at all, um, Kurt? I am. I am. I, I was fortunate enough to visit there in, in 2012, I think it was. And um, it, it's a beautiful landscape and um, it has issues as well in terms of, you know, all the, um, the oil exploration that's going on around there and um, flaring these oil wells and, and the night light and the light pollution that that's creating. Um, I could go on and on, but it, it's a beautiful park. Um, I got to visit the Elkhorn section of the park, which is kind of an annex away from the main body of the park. And that's where uh, Theodore Roosevelt had his home. And uh, unfortunately, the home doesn't exist, but the big foundation stones um, that he built the, the timbers on are still there. Still and, there. Um, it really takes you back to um, the president that uh, is known as the, the conservation president of all time. Hmm. You know, I wanted that's... to mention something, John, going back to what you were saying about um, how we're a nonprofit organization. And there's a couple of reasons I wanted to go that way and focus on getting reader and listener support. Um, one, I'm not going to be here forever. Eventually I'll retire. And um, I want to make sure that the mission of the traveler continues. And so that's why we turned into a nonprofit back in uh, 2016. And we have a board of directors who, who shares my view of that mission because there are so many important stories and issues of wonderment, of science, of exploration, and even of, of threats to the national parks that deserve to be told. But by running as a nonprofit and, and not going for um, as much commercial support as we could get, you know, mm -hmm. we don't have pop-ups on the site and you're not going to be interrupted yep. by a video that starts playing the moment you turn to our page. Yep. And so we really look for those people who are passionate about the national parks and passionate about learning about the national parks and ask them to support our mission. And the beauty of the parks, I mean, look, at there are, there are a number of great um, commercial parks, but the national parks really serve a different mission. Um, many times they serve the same audience, but we've got to tell people a story. And you know what? We're going to get into the essential RVing guide to the national parks when we come back right after this message from our friends at Lee's 
auto and RV ranch. Good afternoon, Nervda. Hey, we want to welcome Gracie back from her 14,000 mile trip. Gracie. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Yeah, you had a good time on your van life trip of North America? It was awesome. All right. What do you got here? A little, little teardrop, Grace? A little mini packs. Nice, nice. Decals. Beautiful. That's the wilderness package it just came out with. So maybe next week we'll get a little bit of more information on Grace's 14,000-mile tour of North America. But in the meantime, Grace, want to invite everybody down? Yeah, we want to our family owned dealership we have a great selection of units in stock now and we have the harvest jubilee sale going on now until thanksgiving all right yeah have everyone come on down to see us great looking forward to seeing everybody welcome everybody from the nerve the group and the nerve the association and bob zagami and john DePietro. talk to you next week and special thanks to our friends at lee's for being our sponsor. Now, this essential RVing guide to national parks. Bernie, you've had a chance to look through it. Have you ever yeah. seen anything that's more jam-packed? I know it It has specific information on 250 campgrounds and 70. And you know what? Look, at, for I'm going to guess for most of the audience that's watching this show, they're not going to get to 70 national parks. No, you might hope walking. so, but uh, that would be a that would be a great bucket list, that's for sure. So, um, Bernie, what what was it that um, really enticed you about this particular program? Well, just like everything else on this site, and and folks, you got to realize they're putting up this information for free, and they, it does cost them money to provide this these resources to you, but it's it breaks it down. It, it goes right into those parks, and it lets you know the important things to visit at those parks while you're there. So it doesn't just make a list of parks to go to, and it kind of breaks it down, talks a little bit about the history of, of each park, and it also shows you the important features in each one of those that you can't miss. If you're going to go there, make sure you, you hit A, B, C, D, E, F, G, because, mm -hmm. you know, this is just so much information. And yeah. uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to brag on some other part of the website that I went to. I was scrolling through some topics or something like that and found a subcategory that was actually a link to the National Park Service history of the national parks. And it's not just one story about the whole thing in general. It's actually stories about each and every park in the country, and this even uploads of publications from way back in the early 20th century about whether it be like a brochure from the park or a publication of that uh, about the park in those areas. I'm like, this is just a plethora. I used oodles earlier, but now oh, I'm plethora. plethorizing. Oh my and God. It's just Kurt, so you think he's a writer. It's, it's extraordinary. <laughs> and, you know, Kurt, I can't thank you enough for putting this together in okay, such an easy, fun, comprehensive way. Let so me let interrupt. Me Before Kurt says that, I want to just make one for clarification. 99.9% .9 of the content is available for free, but this, this uh, specific uh, essential RV and guide to the national yep. parks is huge, and it sells for the unbelievably, ridiculously low price of nine dollars and ninety five cents, which you can order right on the site, and I'm going to do it right right after the show. It's an I automatic guarantee. download, right, Kurt? I'm sorry. It's an automatic download. Um, it sends you a link, yeah. Yeah, a link. Okay. Yeah. So, Bernie, you asked um, you asked Kurt a question, and I interrupted to. Uh, oh, oh no. Kurt was interrupting me because I think he was saying he was going to have to pay me for all of that chatter, <laughs> but um, but the fact not is exactly. Not exactly. <laughs> but at any rate, what I would like for folks to do, I'm going to sign up and, and buy this book right after the show. And I want promises from our audience to say, hey, for $9.95, this is a not only a great resource for you to use when you're RVing, but it's a worthy cause for sure to, to give this, in, to have this information available for folks. 
Okay. Kurt, yep. you're our guest. You might, as well, you might as well say something here. Great. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> no, one, one of the things I want to um, set the story right on what Bill was saying about he fell into this, this history vault of all this um, background um, publications and, and whatnot on the national parks. That's an outside site that we link to. A good friend of mine, uh, a couple of good friends of mine run that. And the National Park Service used to have this type of site. And then for some reason, they shut it down. And these gentlemen, when they retired, they resurrected it on their own. And it's an incredible wow. resource. I mean, I use it often when I'm researching stories because it does have all these documents going back to 1916 when the National Park Service was, uh, was founded. Um, one other thing I wanted to say about the, the essential guide to RVing the national parks, the reason we created that was because there was no one guide to, you know, if you're an RVer and you want to go to this park, you know, <laughs> what about the campground? What facilities are there? You would have to go to every website in the national park system to figure out that information. Yep. And so we decided there was a real need for this. And uh, some of my contributors are full-time RVers. They've been on the road since I think 2007 and they visited a lot of national parks. And so we put our heads together and came up with this guide largely as a reader service because we knew there was a need for it out there. I mean, it has details on how many campsites, how, how big of a RV will fit into those sites. Is there Wi-Fi there? Are there dump stations there? More and more and more, all the information you need as an RVer. And so uh, again, it's a primarily a reader service. That's why it's 995, John. Um, Fingers crossed, we're hoping to turn it into an app for 2023 so you can just download it to the, the, the your iPhone mm -hmm. or your, your Android. Yep. But well, we want to ask you two things or make, make two points um, to our audience. Number one, if there is a topic you'd like to see covered, Kurt, and they send it to you, I mean, you'd look into that at least, right? We'll give it a shot for sure. Give it a for shot sure. at least. And also at the same time, folks, if, you, um, if we haven't made you feel guilty enough yet, um, contribute, you know, uh, I had, I had Kurt on one of our other shows and his, his content was so good. And he gave me so much information that I was able to, um, talk to some other people and do some other shows about it, that I made a donation. And for me to make a donation, it's gotta be something because I've, I'm probably one of the cheapest people in America, but I thought the program was so good. So somewhere on there, I don't know if Bill can mention it, the page that says donate now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. Right up in the top right hand corner, it says donate. Just hit that button, folks. And uh, let's let Kurt see that um, the people in New England or from New England are um, always interested in keeping good journalism out there. So, um, so Kurt, w coming up, what do you, what do you got? Um, big features you're working on right now? Any earth shattering news? Um, what's happening? Well, you well. We have a feature coming up on uh, the Lost Colony, um, Fort Raleigh National Historic Site in uh, the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And the Lost Colony, of course, is that uh, colony of English settlers back in the 1600s, I believe, that vanished um, pretty much overnight. Um, they've never discovered where the Lost Colony was exactly or what happened to it. And so I've got a writer working on that story. Um, as I mentioned, I was just, just down in northern uh, New Mexico, and I went to Valles Caldera, and um, there's going to be a number of stories on, on the National Preserve. One of them I've got coming up um, involves um, a corner of the park that was just added to the park back in 2020, and it's uh, Valles Caldera is a volcanic in nature. Um, there was a volcanic eruption roughly 1.25 million years ago. Um, 300 times larger than Mount St. Helens back in 1980. And um, there's a section of the park that is still volcanically active. I mean, not with eruptions, but you've got fumaroles as if you were at Yellowstone National Park. And so I've got a, a piece on that. Um, I've got another writer working on a piece on how are parks helping threatened and endangered species? I mean, you know, as the human footprint enlarges, we need places to help these species maintain their habitats and, and hopefully boost their population so they can come off the threatened or the endangered species list. So those are a couple of them. We're also, um, we have a Canadian editor and she does a great job. She's got some features coming out of Canada. We actually have a feature coming out of, uh, I think it's Argentina on the national park down there because the, the long-term broader vision of national parks traveler is to go global because you know the United States does not have a monopoly 
uh, national parks. They might have the best national park system in the world, but um, there are roughly 6,000 um, national parks or, or similar properties throughout the world. And they all have incredible stories that I think deserve to be told. Yep. Yep. And, you know, we're talking about Absolutely. national parks here, but Bernie, I'm sure you'd agree that at least in New England, some of the the content at state parks is absolutely amazing as well. I know last year we were out at Letchworth, Letchworth in New York State, and I think they call it the Grand Canyon of the East. And wow. I was just absolutely, it, it's near the Finger Lakes. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, uh, Kurt, but um, it it had people with license plates from all over the country in last July. You know, there's one down in southwestern Utah called Snow Canyon State Park. And I've, I've long said that the Park Service should commandeer it and add it to the National Park System. It is so beautiful. Hmm. Yeah. Now, one, one thing that Bernie talked about before we went on the show is, is Bernie is an active nudist. And <laughs> this wouldn't be an appropriate topic at this time of the year, but it was 71 degrees today. And ironically, Bob and I were doing... Uh, a segment for our <laughs> a segment for our other show called uh, oh, the Camper Report show yeah. and um, nude friend, RVing uh, across the country is that yeah. what you're, yeah, yeah. the other show our, our friend Tony Barthel did a story about um, nude campgrounds in America and um, most of them are you know private facilities but Kurt are there any um, national parks that um, Welcome, nudity. You know, I, I believe Fire Island National Seashore um, in New York allows that. And I think Indiana Dunes National Park in Indiana does. Um, don't, don't hold me to that one, but I'm pretty sure those, those two at least. And um, I'm and sure there are other. Name. Dune, what, Indiana Dunes. They're not Indiana even, Dunes. aren't they landlocked? Well, they're, they're right there on the Great Lakes. And, um, okay. you know, oh, the Great Lakes. Go. Inland, inland seas. Bernie, you been there? Yep, spend many a summers there for sure. Yeah, yeah. just don't forget. Were your you nude? Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think we would all agree, everybody who's watching this show, that based upon the um, clientele that, including ourselves, that we've noticed at RV parks, that the more they wear, the better. I don't know if our audience wants to wants to uh, chip in on that. You know, I would, I would say in, in most cases, you're absolutely correct. You know, uh, there's nothing wrong with wearing clothes uh, in, in our beers. Uh, you know, God bless them for doing so. Yep. And God bless them for 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 more and more of it. So, Gert, we're just about the end of our topic here. We said we would um, talk to you from 715 to 745. Um, if we want to let people know, look at nationalparkstraveler.org. That's um, right. I just donated made, while while you guys were chatting away. I did, made a little donation. I want to see some of our other uh, watchers, listeners, uh, to do the same. It's you know, it's doing the right thing. This is a fantastic yeah. resource. I, I heard that coin. I heard the coin moving around in your pocket, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kurt, um, final words. Final words. We are in our year-end fundraising campaign. It runs in November and December, and we have matching funds out there that we can grab if we get enough support from readers uh, and listeners across the world. Okay, great. So we're not talking thousands. You know, we're not saying to send thousands of dollars by Why any not? means. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure you'd like that, but <laughs> you know, your average gift is not like that. And you, you had mentioned to me the the number of people um, based upon the number of readers versus the number of contributors it was a um it was a very very dis disproportionately correct yeah it's um it's unfortunate i think it goes back to the the mentality from you know the last century that if it's on the internet it should be free and um unfortunately there's very little in life that's free these days i mean we've got power bills we've got electric bills we got um you know, writer bills, expenses, and, and everybody likes to make a living. We're not looking to get rich on this. We're just hoping that we can afford to continue to bring a good product. Yep. Yep. Now, remember before Bernie said somebody's going to apologize for being late? Yep. Okay. Our friend Jim Roy. Sorry, Sorry. I'm late, guys. Just getting in. 
Now, Jim Roy has a very, very interesting business is that he left a career as a custom home builder to restore vintage Airstreams. And um, yeah, I'm sure you see a lot of Airstreams in the National Park because um, they're an iconic product and um, are so portable. And you can get the smaller ones in and out of the parks um, without much trouble like the big ones. Yeah, a good friend of mine has one, and it's just gorgeous. I mean, he, during the Park Service Centennial, he traveled around the North National Park System because um, he's known as Ranger Doug, and they make a lot of vintage um, Works Progress Administration posters of the national parks that are very popular. And the inside of his Airstream is this incredible mural that actually wraps the whole interior. Wow. It's a so- southwest setting, and it's just, wow. just gorgeous. But, it was um, painted? Yeah painted just gorgeous wow so kurt we want to thank you so much for joining us we've got a few more minutes left and um bernie and i will wrap up the show but um folks nationalparkstraveler.org watch it subscribe to it donate to it do all the good things Uh, i see audrey foley egan looking forward to checking out the national parks retiring next fall um you don't really have to wait till you retire to see the national parks, right, Bernie? That's right. There's no time like the present because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, right? So, so many people that I meet every year, um, they wait too long and something happens. So today, if you're feeling good, find time to go camping, for goodness sake. No question. And Bernie, um, you're on the retail side of the camping industry. Yeah. Um, what have you seen in the last couple of years as far as the demographics are concerned with the, because it used to be, again, we're talking about like the full, like Audrey and her, and her husband. Um, they didn't wait till they retired till they got their RV. And it used to be that, oh, when I retire, I'm going to buy, here's what they would say. The, the classic line. When I retire, I'm going to get me one of them Winnebago's and go all over the country. Yep. Instead, they hit the Barker Lounge and they, they just hang out and pass out, uh, you know, watching reruns of uh, I Love Lucy or something. So yep. what you really need to do is when you get that urge, you need to start the process at that time. Because, you know, we like I said, we see people all the time. They come in and I've actually had a couple that were over 75 years old sitting in front of me say that they're not quite ready yet. (laughs) Not quite ready. What are you waiting for? I hope they had their Geritol with them. I know. I mean, so, you know, in, in, for some folks it works, it works out okay that they can wait to retirement. But in most cases, you know, the reason why we retire is because we're kind of, starting to get off our game a little bit, right? So we want to get, while we're on our game, we want to get more input. We want to get more exciting things happening to us. And that's going to keep us younger longer. The more you yep. do, the, the, the more input you get and the more output you put into things, the better you feel, the longer you're going to live, the, the happier you're going to be, and you're going to have great experiences. Yep, exactly. So uh, Jerry says... Uh, Visit the Wild Ponies at Assateague National Park in Maryland. We've done that. And it's amazing to see these ponies um, just running, running free on the, on the, on the water, you know, right on the, on the beach kind of thing. What's Audrey say? Whoa, we've been on hundreds of adventures. We are weekend warriors now and plan on at least a couple long. Right. Exactly. Awesome. That's perfect. Yeah, exactly. That's what we want to see. Get out there. That's the beauty of RVing is that like, for example, we were winter, we were um, winterized last week, but it's supposed to be in the seventies. I'm going back out now. Good. I won't be able to take a shower in the RV, but I'll still be able to use the facilities. I just need to buy that pink stuff um, from you know the facility, you know, for the use of the facilities and and. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you, you, yeah, the portable you know. antifreeze, and you yep. can you all you got to do is run it through your system and run it out using fresh water, and then you can rewinterize it after. It's not rocket science. It's not a big deal. Yep, 
Exactly. Use your camper. That's great. It, I mean, this weather is astounding, though. Yeah, yeah. It makes, I mean, I was. Makes you want to go to those campgrounds with, that you don't need clothes? Yeah. With a, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> you know that's another topic. It, we'll send you the link for that. It's going to be this week. Um, but uh, interesting. And in, again, we did that show the other day before Bob went on vaca- on on his short vacation. But the the question was, have you ever been to a clothing optional RV park? And they answered, um, they had 2,400 and 2,400 answers. So it's, it's a random, you know, it's, it's enough. So it's a valid sample. And the whole story appears uh, by our friend, Tony Barthel. It appears in RV, um, RV travel, RV travel, which is um, another website with lots of content on it. But have you ever stayed in a park? Uh, the answer was yes, was 11%, no, 24%, no, but would consider it 20%, and nice. no, never, no, never, 46%. Um, but it's it, a pretty good it, ratio of uh, not no, nevers, right? right. Well, you look, at, you look at the yes and the no, but would consider, that's 31%. Uh, I do not want to be at the park some of those people have that revel revelation. I guess oh, that's, that's what you were asking me about earlier. It's like, how is the demographic shifted, right? You went on to this big, long thing, and we cut it off track there. Yeah, right. So, so it, it kind of makes me think of this a little bit. The demographics have shifted tremendously. Yeah. tremendously. So we see people every day that, for the lack of a better term, are more like city slickers, you know? So we're, we're seeing more people that are, you know, that are professionals that work downtown, you know, they dress up and go to work. And in the reason that I say that some of these people are pretty good looking, you know, they're, they, you know, they're all neat and tidy and they well-groomed and all that other stuff. So, you know, so, but what I'm saying is the demographics in the last two years have just brought, it's just spread out completely where you could almost see a camper walking through the door, like, yep, that's an RV or, you know, yep, that's definitely an RV. And nowadays, you know, it's really, uh, you can't judge a book by its cover for sure. By any means, but keep the cover on. That's all, all, <laughs> all I want to say. But Especially uh, me. <laughs> Audrey says, I can't put the grand, grandkids. That's not for us. Jim Roy says, I can't wait to retirement because I'll never be able to retire. But Jim, You'll probably never be able to retire because don't you have like a one year backup of work sitting on the lot? Yep. The beauty is that those, those airstreams, they made the shell so well that the inside can be changed out. And I, I talked to one of the executives at airstream and I said, well, why is that? And they said, everything that's inside an, in an airstream came in the door. And co- can go out the door. So they can change the upholstery. They can change the furniture. They can change the appliances, et cetera. Oh, three-year wait. A three-year wait. Outstanding. So, and he deserves uh, all that success, too. He's a yeah. hard-working guy and does great work. So Exactly. Eminent. So anything in an Airstream um, can be taken out the door. You don't have to take the windshield out. You don't have to take the roof out. You don't have to take windows out. Um, and that's very, very interesting. So, Jim, good luck to you. And that, you know what, just about does it for our show. If Bill has our final, um, what do you call it, commercial for our friends at um, Lee's. Lee's. <laughs> that was- Good afternoon, Nervda. Hey, we want to welcome Gracie back from her 14,000-mile trip. Gracie. How's it going? It's good. Yeah, you had a good time on your van life trip of North America? It was awesome. All right. What do you got here? A little, little teardrop, Grace? A little mini pack. Nice, nice. Decals. Beautiful. That's the wilderness package they just came out with. So maybe next week we'll get a little bit of more information on Grace's 14,000-mile tour of North America. But in the meantime, Grace, want to invite everybody down? Yeah, Come- Check out our facility, our family-owned dealership. 
We have a great selection of units in stock now. And we have the Harvest Jubilee sale going on now until Thanksgiving. So All right. Yeah, have everyone come on down to see us. Great. Look forward to seeing everybody. Welcome everybody from the Nerve the Group and the Nerve the Association and Bob Zagami and John DePietro. Talk to you next week. Well, thanks so much, everyone. And we want to um, let our uh, producer extraordinaire, Bill Sell, um, say hello to everybody here. And Bill, we want to ask you, you know what? It says advisor communications. Outside of just pressing buttons, what, what does advisor communications do? Because you never know who's in our audience that might need your services. Well, we create events, uh, whether they're online, like a, an event like this, or in person for companies. So if you have an idea and you're thinking, how do I put it together? That's where we come in and uh, take the idea from inception all the way through to conclusion and hopefully do it on a profitable basis for you as well. So we'll bring in sponsors and supporters to help cover the costs of these things. So advisor communications is where they can reach you. That's and correct. We want to thank our friend Uncle Bernie from Campers in RV oh, sitting in for guy. Professor Zagami, who will be back next week. Now he's probably probably done dinner. He's probably cleaned out his wallet, and um, he's probably going to a show, which he'll probably fall asleep at. There you that go, giant ship. Oh, or have that, yeah. have the, the glass of Jack in there his you hand. Go. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure that that was the um, stipulation before he went on that cruise that uh, did they have plenty of that. So we want to say thank you so much, Bernie. Final comments? Yeah, I wanted to thank you folks for having me on once again. And, you know, I appreciate the audience for tolerating my, you know, uh, insubordinates or whatever it may be that I do. Uh, but, you know, you guys are great. It's a wonderful show. And I did want to just put one more quick plug in for Kurt and his nationalparkstraveler.org group because they are a nonprofit organization and they do rely on donations to, to do the work that they do. And once you get on their web page, you're going to be inspired. I'm going to do that right now. Yeah. And it's, tell you yeah, that resources. this has been RV in New England with John DePietro, Bernie Culleton sitting in for Bob Zagami, and we will see you next week. Actually, we'll see you next week from Las Vegas. Yeah, I'll be hosting, helping out again next week just to kind of keep the rabble from rousing too much. Great. Have a great day, everybody. This edition of RVing in New England was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.